Let's bring back David Dotson again. You just heard Steve Leisman breaking down the, the, the Beige Book report. This is kind of what you were alluding to, right? This idea that with these high prices, they cannot be sustained because in the end of the day, they're, they're going to slow down based upon what, what's happening with the economy. I wonder, though, the expectations component of what Steve just mentioned is curious to me. The expectations yeah, well, are what think, Fed... You know, we they, what, what, what we saw professor, today, but what, just hold on one second. Hold, in the past. hold on now one second, professor. Hold and on the one second. Book is indeed saying that we see some, you know, evidence of high prices, but the but the point is, what is what are we seeing when we walk down Main Street? And when we walk down Main Street, we see that prices are coming down. Now the big sort of question I think is what's going to happen in the labor markets because if in fact you have these forces that are that are bringing prices down, which I think they will, but the labor market continues to fuel higher wages and we can pass through those costs. That's the one thing that could be scary and could lead to a wage price spiral, which I don't foresee, but I think that's possible. But what about the expectations, though? The, the, the inflation expectations are what the, what the Fed is trying to fight. What happens if we as consumers or as a nation start to just expect higher prices going forward? Isn't that a big danger as well? Absolutely. And that's really the thing that we need to focus on. But fortunately, there's data to suggest that most consumers don't expect this inflation to continue. And there's been constant polling for decades on what consumers think prices are going to be going forward. Now, you can look at that data and you can say, OK, well, clearly consumers do not think this 9 percent inflation is going to continue. But there's another question to ask yourself. Just look at how you and your neighbors are behaving. Is anybody rushing out and buying something today because they think it's going to be significantly more expensive in October? The answer is no. So you can just look at day-to-day -day consumer behavior and see that people are saying, you know what? I'm not going to buy that house today. I'm not going to buy that snowblower today. I'm not going to buy those things at Target today, because not because I think that prices are going to go up, but because I think prices are going to be either the same or going to be coming down. And by the way, we haven't even talked about the bloating inventories and the higher interest rates, which is going to force retailers to try to push through that inventory. And the only way you're going to push through that inventory is dropping prices. So, you know, ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, has made the point that deflation is going to be a bigger problem going forward. And we're already maybe starting to see some commentary coming out. It seems weird to talk about that at a time when inflation is running at the fastest pace in 41 years. But which is going to be worse, Professor, in your mind? Is it the inflation that we have right now or the threat of deflation going forward? I think that what's happened now, it, what we've seen in the past, is this pumping of the brakes, as I've said, which is slowing down the economy. I think the idea that because we've had bad inflation, that necessarily implies bad policy or that we're in trouble is wrong. I think what we've had is a cooling down in the economy. If there's some deflation that happens over the next six months, I don't think that's going to be detrimental to the economy at all. But I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think what's going to happen is we're going to have a cooling down of the economy. Remember, we have been spoiled with zero interest rates open up your mailbox and there's checks to spend money on. We've been a spoiled economy right now. We're actually sort of moving back into pre-COVID days where we have normal interest rates, we have normal GDP, and everything's settling down. That's my view.